The information provided in this video, such as the primer sequences, kits used and thermocyclic conditions, are from published papers. Please refer to the accompanying PDF for web links and the full protocol, including specific volumes. My name is Lindsay Elton and I'm a postdoctoral research associate for University College London and the Pandora IDNet Consortium. This video shows the method for reverse transcriptase PCR, which can be used to diagnose the 2019 novel coronavirus. This method utilizes the virus's nucleic acid and therefore can be used to diagnose it in both humans and animals. Before you can do PCR on your samples, you will need to extract the virus's RNA. Biosafety level 3 or BSL3 conditions, including a class 1 or a class 2 microbiological safety cabinet, must be used when handling 2019 NCOV as there is evidence that it can be transmitted from human to human. You must follow your local BSL-3 health and safety rules at all times during these procedures. You must have a clean chain of laboratories to prevent contamination of your PCR samples. There are lots of kits that can be used to extract viral RNA, but the kit used here is the Direct Sol RNA Mini Prep Kit. In a new RNAs free screw cap tube, add 80 microliters of your sample and 240 microliters so three volumes of trizole. Mix this thoroughly for five minutes to lyse your sample. Add an equal volume of 95 to 100% ethanol to your lysed sample and mix thoroughly. Transfer the lysed sample into a spin column which is placed within a collection tube. Carefully wipe down the spin columns and collection tubes with disinfectant before placing them into an enclosed micro centrifuge bucket to contain any aerosols produced. Wipe down the outside of the bucket and your gloves with disinfectant, following your local safety rules regarding disinfection. Remove it from the biological safety cabinet. Place into a micro centrifuge and spin at 10 to 16,000 G for 30 seconds. Remove the bucket from the micro centrifuge and place back into the microbiological safety cabinet before opening the bucket. Transfer the column into a new collection tube. Add 400 microliters of direct sol RNA pre-wash to the column and centrifuge as described before. Discard the flow through and repeat this step one more time. A recommended extra step is to DNAs treat your samples as described in the accompanying PDF protocol. Add 700 microliters of RNA wash buffer to the column and centrifuge as described before for two minutes rather than 30 seconds to ensure complete removal of all the wash buffer. Transfer the column carefully to an RNAs free tube. To elute your RNA, add 50 microliters of DNAs and RNAs free water directly to the column matrix and centrifuge as described before. Alternatively, for a higher concentrated RNA, elute it into 25 microliters instead of 50. Transfer the eluted RNA into a screw cap tube. The eluted RNA can be used immediately or stored at minus 70 degrees. Ensure that you keep track of each of your samples throughout this process by labeling them clearly. As good practice, you should check that your extraction method has worked by quantifying your eluted RNA. There are a number of ways to do this, which are explained in the accompanying protocol PDF. It is important that your PCR samples do not get cross-contaminated with other samples in your laboratory. To ensure this, you need a clean chain of laboratories, meaning that your PCR preparation area is separate from your PCR thermocycler area, where large amounts of DNA amplicons are generated. Ideally, you should prepare your PCR reagents in a cabinet to protect them from contamination. 
As the polymerase chain reaction requires DNA, we need to use reverse transcriptase, or RT, to create complementary or cDNA strands from the extracted RNA. In this protocol, we are using one-step real-time RT-PCR, where the cDNA is synthesized by a reverse transcriptase in the same tube as the PCR reaction. For this PCR, we need nuclease-free water, two times reverse transcriptase PCR buffer, a forward and reverse primer, plus probe for 2019 NCoV, plus 25 times RT-PCR enzyme mix to create a master mix. Before starting your PCR, you will need to order primers and probes specific to the 2019 NCoV, as described in the literature. Usually primers will be delivered to you as a lyophilized powder and they will need to be reconstituted in nuclease-free water. You should receive a data sheet with your primers telling you what volumes are needed to make stock solutions. Ensure that you have thoroughly mixed the water with the powder and before opening your tube, spin it down in a centrifuge. For more information about fluorescent probes, please refer to the accompanying PDF protocol. It is advisable to then aliquot some of this stock solution into microtubes of working solution and freeze them at minus 20 degrees to minimize freeze thawing and contamination of your main stock. To create your master mix, you will need to add the reagents to a separate RNAs free tube. In this example, we have extracted the RNA from three patient samples. These are labeled one, two, and three here. The volumes you will need depend on the amount of samples that you are processing. In this example, we are repeating each of our three samples three times, as well as having three positive controls and four negative controls. Please refer to the supplementary protocol PDF for the PCR reagent volumes needed, as well as an explanation about positive and negative controls. Mix the master mix well by pipetting or gently flicking the tube. Once you have created your master mix, aliquot it into the PCR tubes. These may differ or be plates with wells, depending on the PCR machine that you are using. Don't forget to add nuclease-free water to your negative controls and 2019 NCoV nucleic acid to your positive control tubes. If you do not have 2019 NCoV RNA for your positive control, refer to the supplementary protocol PDF. Add your extracted RNA samples to the tubes, ensuring that you have made a note of the order in which you add them so that you can keep a track of them when you place them in the PCR machine. If using tubes, ensure you carefully but firmly place the lids on top. It is helpful to label the lids so you can keep track of the samples. You can now proceed to your PCR amplification laboratory. This area should only be used for amplifying DNA and not preparing PCR reagents. In this video, we are showing you how to set up the conditions for a Corbett Research real-time PCR thermocycler rotor gene, but yours may be different. Please refer to the manufacturer's guidelines for how to set up your thermocycler. Place the tubes into the rotor. The rotor is numbered to ensure that your samples do not get confused. Once you have placed the silver locking ring on top of the rotor, place it into the thermocycler lining it up with the pin and press it down until you hear it click. Close the lid of the thermocycler and then open the thermocycler program on the computer. Open a new run in the program. On this machine, we have to confirm the type of rotor and that we have attached the locking ring. We can then set up the cycle settings. The paper we have referred to states that the cycle should be held at 50 degrees for 15 minutes 95 degrees for 3 minutes, and then 45 cycles of 95 degrees for 15 seconds and 60 degrees for 30 seconds. Ensure that you are acquiring fluorescence in the same channel as your probe. In this case, we have used Psi 5 and therefore must detect crimson. Refer to the accompanying PDF protocol for more information on probes. Once the conditions are set up, run the cycle and save the results to an appropriate folder. You can then label each of your samples in the program. Once the thermocycler has finished, you can open the file with your results. Click on Analysis and then on the Crimson channel, which brings up the PCR cycle curves. You can then set and move the threshold or baseline. The threshold is defined as the level of detection or the point at which a reaction reaches a fluorescent intensity above background levels, i.e. your negative controls, which are shown in black here. Please note that this is not a quantitative PCR, we are purely identifying whether 2019 NCoV RNA is present in a sample or not. 
to validate this PCR for the first time, if you do not already have a 2019 NCOV positive control, you should sequence your positive samples. For more information on analysing PCR results, refer to the accompanying protocol PDF. The protocol in this video uses specific kits and equipment to identify 2019 NCOV nucleic acid in samples. If you need more information about diagnosing this virus, please contact the Pandora ID net or consult further sources such as the Global Health Network's 2019 NCOV Knowledge Hub or the WHO's website, both of which are referenced in the accompanying protocol PDF.